The Middle East. It's like the New York Knicks. You know, it's got major problems and it'll probably be generations before they're fixed. <laughs> and over the weekend, tensions flared up once again in the region when Saudi Arabia's oil facilities were attacked by missiles. And the U.S. and Saudi Arabia are pointing the finger at Iran, which means shit's about to go down. Crisis and uncertainty across the Mideast this morning. The U.S. and Saudi Arabia facing a big military decision. U.S. intelligence indicating cruise missiles that hit Saudi Arabia were fired from Iran. Overnight, Iran issuing a new warning to the United States. Even as Secretary of State Mike Pompeo traveled to the region to confront the crisis. Yeah, that's right. Mike Pompeo, Secretary of State and satisfied Home Depot customer is flying to the Middle East to confront the crisis head on. I actually feel bad for secretaries of state because you realize they only get sent to shitty situations. <laughs> yeah, it's always them jumping on a 16-hour flight to go prevent a war or genocide or, like, pretend to like Kim Jong-un. And I'll just be like, hey, Kim, I love that outfit. Who made it? Oh, a, a slave. Very nice. <laughs> and it's not even like they have to go to these places in person, right? Like, what is Pompeo doing in the Middle East right now that he can't do on the phone, right? Is he just on the border of Iran? Like, you want a piece of this Iran? Huh? <laughs> you want this Iran? Bring it! Bri oh, shit, they're bringing it! They're bringing it! <laughs> but despite there being no casualties, this is still a big deal. These facilities are responsible for 5% of the world's oil production, and it's probably why Donald Trump is going through all of his options on how to respond. The Pentagon is cautioning against striking Iran, but has given President Trump a list of possible targets there. You certainly could strike Revolutionary Guard core sites. You could hit bases. Other options, a U.S. cyber attack against Iran or targeting Iranian ships. On Monday, military leaders presented him with a list of possible actions against Iran, but people briefed on the meeting say that the president asked for more, that he was looking for a more narrow response that would not draw the U.S. into a broader conflict with Iran. You know, if there's one thing I appreciate about Donald Trump, it's that despite raving like a madman on Twitter, he's actually quite reluctant when it comes to actual war. Which, when you think about it, is everyone on Twitter. Yeah. <laughs> Online, they'll be like, screw you, Gronkowski! But then if he shows up, he'll be like, what did you say? Oh, I was talking about a different Gronkowski! <laughs> My friend, Michael Gronkowski! <laughs> but Trump is always quick to remind America's enemies that just because he doesn't want to fight, doesn't mean that America can't fight. Late Sunday, President Trump said the U.S. believes it knows the culprit behind this weekend's drone attack on Saudi Arabia's oil facilities and is locked and loaded. He said the United States is prepared for a war. Uh, the United States is more prepared than any country in the history of... of in any history, <laughs> if we have to go that way. In any history. <laughs> any history. Is Trump talking about parallel universes? <laughs> no, like, what if we think he's crazy, but the truth is that his brain can access alternate realities? <laughs> like, it would explain why everything he says is always just slightly off. Like, maybe in a parallel universe, Hurricane Dorian did hit Alabama. <laughs> yeah, maybe there, Kofifi is a real word. <laughs> and Frederick Douglass is still alive. I mean, it's either that or he's a dumbass, but we'll never know. <laughs> the point is, it's still not clear whether America will go to war with Iran, which is probably confusing for a lot of people because why is protecting Saudi Arabia America's problem to begin with? Well, apparently, it's because Saudi Arabia and America have forged a deep bond over their shared values, uh, by which I mean cold, hard cash. That was an attack on Saudi Arabia, and uh, that wasn't an attack on us, but we would certainly help them. They've been a great ally. They spend... $400 billion in our country over the last number of years. And they're not ones that, unlike some countries, where they want terms. They want terms and conditions. No, no, Saudi Arabia pays cash. The Saudis uh, are going to have a lot of uh, involvement in this if we decide to do something. Uh, they'll be very much involved, and that includes payment. Oh, okay, so is Trump saying America should go to war with Saudi Arabia because they buy their stuff in cash? That would be the worst motivational speech before war ever. Just like, why do we fight? Not for our wives, not for our children. No, because they pay cash. <laughs> ah! 
sometimes Venmo, which we also accept. Ah! So this is a new day for America. From being a country that used to fight only for its values to uh, Don King over here saying, if the price is right, America gonna fight. <laughs> and if that's the case, you realize those army ads you see on TV, they have to change them to be a lot different. Are you a country that wants to go to war, but you don't want to use your own weapons? Do you have cash? Well, the American military is open for business. Under President Trump's new policy, America's armed forces are up for rent. We got tanks, we got planes, we got those guns that go ba 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 if you got the money, America's military will fight whoever you want. France? Sure. Your country's civil war? Hell yeah. America itself? See you later, my house. Don't spend your blood and treasure on pointless war. Spend ours. Supplies are limited, so call today. Michael Costa, everybody.